and Joe, another episode ready to go. They're gonna talk about the good and the trash and anything in between. Cherishing make believe, get ready for Halloween, it's the horror show. I know you miss those guys. Tune in and find out what's on their list tonight. They butcher and dissect, take apart and mutilate. Listen to you two, favorite brainiacs communicate. It's the horror show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Horror Show, the show that dissects, mutilates, dismembers, and butchers all of your favorite and not-so-favorite horror movies and other horror-related events. I'm Sean. I'm Joe. I'm a little more energetic than last episode. How are you? It's good. Uh, about the same energy, but uh, less sniffles. Oh, I forgot about the fucking sniffles. My energy actually did dwindle right before the episode. I don't know why, but I'm going to try and pick it up. I mean... We have to pick it up for this episode. <laughs> I'm excited. I this episode's wait. gonna bring the fucking heat. I think. I think this episode's gonna bring the fucking heat. Uh, this is one of those movies where when I'm watching it, I'm like, "Fuck! I wish I didn't have like a nine to five job, and I could just or either of us had one, and I could just be like, just stop what you're doing and let's record this episode right yes, now." Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That that would be sick. Um, now we're talking about the monsters 2022 by Rob zombie, but yes. before we get into the movie, we got a few things we've got to cover. Uh, just one thing I want to plug a listener of the show. Uh, they made a comic book adaptation of, uh, and then there was Sean episode of boy meets world. Um, and you can find that over at, and then there was Sean.com and the Instagram is at, and then there was Sean. It's a comic book adaptation of that Halloween episode of boy meets world. A great episode. The greatest. So fucking to the pencil, pencil through the head. So check (laughs) that out. Uh, second is we are running a contest. Thanks to Warner brothers. Uh, we're giving away, Unique codes for Poltergeist and the Lost Boy Bundle on digital 4K Ultra HD. Here's the contest, guys. You need to send us your most under-the-radar spooky season movies. Email me, sean at ihatehorror.com. Subject line contest will be... I think we set the end date for the 16th, but we're going to announce them um, in increments. But we had to do the 16th because one of you... One of your under the radar movies will be our October live show on the twenty second. I think that's the date. I don't know. Um, Sounds right. Yeah, something like that, right? Uh, October, yeah, October twenty second. So one of your choices will one of the winners will, uh, in addition to the digital download, will also be featured on that, and we'll probably do some bonus episodes talking about the other winners. Uh, and the movies they chose, and actually just all the movies recommended. Some of the emails have been very, very good, very good. Um, so you can find all that information over at our Instagram at I Hate Horror. Um, and you know, remember, go out there and buy Poltergeist and the Lost Boys now on 4K Ultra HD, just in time for spooky season. I haven't watched the Lost Boys in a minute. That's such a good fucking October. movie. Such a good so fucking good. movie. And you know what? So I, I was a Poltergeist hater. Sorry, WB. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but I was a hater. I've recently kind of come back around to it. Really? My, you, re- you rewatched it or just thinking about just it? Just thinking about it. Um, it, But it's this, oh, this haunted house thing, man. Ever since Amityville. <laughs> Amityville honestly changed my fucking life. <laughs> <laughs> it really did. I'm obsessed with haunted house movies now, and I think I appreciate all of them so much more after Amityville. We should give Poltergeist another go then. We There's so it. many we want. We need to give another go to. There's a lot of them that we need to give another go, and we need to do that. So we have a very special plan. But has it already passed? What for, for a listener? I don't know what you're talking about. We're gonna surprise a listener. Oh, oh no, no. Um, it's upcoming. Okay, I know what you're saying. We're going to surprise a listener as a, as a gift. They don't know. It's going to be so fun. It's going to be so fun. <laughs> but we're going to be redoing one of their Patreon picks yes. um, in honor of them. Um, they're just going to – never mind. I probably shouldn't have even said it like that. There's going to be so many people that are like, it's me. It's like, you know. <laughs> now we owe it to all of them. <laughs> <laughs> now we immediately go back to re- redo episodes. <laughs> we immediately go back to Patreon picks. All, all the ones that broke us down the first time. <laughs> Sounds like a good fucking plan. 
All right. Uh, so that's our contest. Uh, also want to plug, sorry, we've got a few plugs this time. Uh, our Patreon page, patreon.com slash I hate horror. We just recorded a new, all documented, all true. This week's topic was Big one. Betty and Barney Hill. Uh, one of the very early, ab- uh, alien abduction cases. Um, yes. and if you listen to our other episodes, kind of in line with Joe Simonton, same time period, uh, but a much more interesting tale. I'll be, I'll be quite frank there. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's more details. I mean, Joe, well, the fact that we fucking babbled about dumbass Joe Simonton for 90 minutes is we deserve a prize for stretching that guy's story out. <laughs> so yeah, it, it was great. And this week's, uh, Betty and Barney Hill, it's a Patreon exclusive. We're not going to release it. So. If you want to support us and keep listening to All Documented, All True, head on over there. Um, and then the final thing is the store is done, but don't head over there quite yes. yet. I'm waiting for the samples. The last thing is I just want to see the samples in my hand. I That's the only thing holding it up. I should get them in. By the time this episode drops, I should have them in hand. Um, as long as everything's good, uh, I'm going to put up the store for Patreon only. It's password protected. Anyone in Patreon, you'll be able to get like the first crack at ordering um, merch and stuff. And then we will open it up to the general public. And you'll be able to find that at IHateHorror.com. The link's already there. Um, it's just password protected right now. So um, just keep your eyes peeled. And we'll, of course, announce it when they come out. New designs, old designs. It's cool as fuck. It's cool as fuck. I, I'm very excited just to get that out there and for me to never have to package um, a shirt ever again. That's <laughs> my goal in life okay that's it though that's that's our house cleaning we have the monsters rob zombie is fucking back baby he's back he's back after what was the last one 31 rob, was 31 this is his last one probably should have looked that up 2016 dude the one fucking fact that i was <laughs> <laughs> I looked up so much information except his his filmography. Oh no, three from hell, of course, of course. Oh, three, three from, from hell, hell. twenty nineteen or twenty eighteen, yeah. Which yeah. rough, dude. That was a rough fucking movie. That was fucking rough. Was not a fan <laughs> of that. That was remember no, the hard out pole Sid Head. <laughs> I'm a defender of uh, House of a Thousand Corpses and Devil's Rejects through and through to this day. I think they're I think they're great, but that one is House of a Thousand Corpses. I mean, I guess it's fine. It's fan fiction, right? It's just like not even fan fiction. It's just like deep throating Texas Chainsaw Massacre and, and like, sure and Charles Manson. But like, for some reason. And, and you know, this is going to be something. I mean, I. That we should talk about. Uh, what's what's the one after? I'm sorry. What's the one? Something after? we should talk about is 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 Rob Zombie really bad at paying homage to things he loves? Yes, the worst. <laughs> He's so fucking bad at it that it's that it's fucking scary. It's actually fucking scary. How do you even know he likes something? You can't even fucking tell. The, we'll get into that. But what? Oh, Devil's Rejects. Devil's Rejects is his best movie, hands down, right? Easily. Easily, Easily. in my opinion. Yeah. What happened? Why did, Why was he able to crank that out? Because it's funny, because House of a Thousand Corpses, I don't care if you like it or not, it's fine. Like, I, it's whatever. It's non-offensive to me. It's what. It's just what it exists. Uh, I don't love it. But it. it's the same vein as his other stuff, right? And then there's, like, randomly Devil's Rejects right here that's like... That fucking movie fucking rips. Like that fucking it does. That is that's that is taking you know the movies you love, but updating them, adapting them, changing some stuff, adding your own style to it, and like telling a fucking gritty story. Well, I think it, he he finally just like allowed himself to be himself and did his own thing, and he didn't have to pull from other source material. Whereas then he goes to Halloween. That's true. A story that everybody knows, and he honestly, I'll still respect Rob for putting his own twist on it. Like I can't fault him for that. I just don't think it was very good. Yeah. But I respect him for doing that. Devil's Rejects was just his through and through. Yeah, like, that was his brainchild. He set the wheels in motion with the first one, and like just kept rolling with it into this one. Yeah, and and, and 
you know that you know the Halloween thing. I actually will give I, I give him credit too because an impossible task that he was given. Because some people are like, "How can you remake Halloween?" Listen, it's not his choice. They were gonna fucking do it anyway. It's just yeah. it's just like this monsters movie. They were making a fucking monsters movie regardless. They just Rob threw his name in the fucking hat and they chose that. So the same and thing. And this isn't Halloween. the first time a monster movie was remade. No. The monsters Let's have been fucking remade. Let's talk about that too. The fucking yeah. 80s, which by the way, Rob, the one thing you could have fucking done is make it not look like the abysmal fucking 80s TV show. It's like the one thing you could have fucking done. And for some reason, you use the exact same color palette. Like the exact. But did you same- get his, his budget? Because I don't think he had much of, much to work with. So I did. Get I don't his think budget. they gave him much at all. I I did get his budget. So it was rumored at forty million, and he was like, "Get the fuck out of here!" I didn't get forty million dollars for this. <laughs> and then he, his quote is, "Well, he said, how the hell did ev- everyone get the idea that the monsters cost forty million dollars? Fuck! I wish I had that kind of budget." Well, okay. What would you have done with it? I, I don't know. But anyway, to put <laughs> to put a little perspective on it all, if you add up the budgets of Halloween two. The Lords of Salem, 31, Three from Hell, and the Munsters all together, it would not even add up to $30 million. So, did some back work here. Halloween 2, $15 million. Uh, Okay. These next two are impressive. I hate these movies, like, so much. But but I hate Lords of Salem. 31 is not great. 31 is fine. It's it's not bad. Lords of Salem is fucking dog shit. It's like one of the worst things I've ever fucking witnessed. I, I can't believe. Anyway, but still a one point five million dollar budget for both of those. That's that's not a lot at all. That's not a lot at all. Like honestly, kind of props to him for making fucking two I movies completely for agree. a one point five million. I, like that's I, almost impossible to be honest with you. And you have to pay the actors. Like, yeah, yeah. And I mean his budgets in that too, right? Like his his. What they pay him is Everything. in that. Everything. So, so it's like Rob, like Rob probably doesn't even need that money. Like 1.5 million. He's probably getting paid like way less than he normally does. Um, so those were 1.5 each. And then three from hell was $3 million. So that leaves us. If it's a, if we're at 21, if it's under, if it's under 30, he said it doesn't even add up to 30. We're around. It's 9 million or less. Okay. And that makes sense. And that, that is not a lot for a Netflix big a movie with a big name like that. Yeah. Like how much that has to go to like the, the rights of the monsters, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a thing. Um, I, I don't know. I, I have some question. I, I have a lot of questions. <laughs> it explains actually, like, I'm glad that you broke that down because it explains a lot as to why he just recycles the same fucking cast over and over again, because you're not bringing in huge names with with that kind of budget. Like you're just going to call up people that you like working with and that like you. Yeah, but like, hey, like, want to do this? Do you think like you could get somebody else? This is so. This was one of my first comments I have on this. So we're going to break down the cast here too. This is monsters, guys. Um, in Entertainment Weekly, Rob just did an interview about it, and they were like, "Hey, why do you always use the same fucking people in these movies?" He's like, I couldn't risk getting... So, first of all, here's the other thing that, like, kind of makes me nuts about this. This is filmed in Budapest. Budapest, yeah. So, there's no reason to go to fucking Budapest for this movie. You <laughs> And the guy that plays Daniel... Uh, what's his name? Roebuck? Is that his name? Ro- Dan- Ro- his grandpa. Roebuck. Yeah, Roebuck. Okay. Yeah. He... He came out in an interview recently and was like, all of these fucking haters saying the movie looks cheap and shitty. They can go fuck themselves. Sherry Moon's a great actress. And and then he goes into this rant about Budapest. And he's like, we filmed in 400-year-old castles in Budapest. They were absolutely gorgeous. Could you imagine the production value of that? Look at it. It's amazing. Dude, Daniel, that's the fucking problem. You can't tell that they are in anywhere. It looks like a studio. It's lit. So Dude, shit- I like it. Dude, I like the lighting. No, I fucking hated it. That, that, I fucking hated it. That was a highlight it. for me. Oh, I the highlight and the it. set design are like the two highlights. When I read when I read that Rob wanted it in black and white and they wouldn't let him, so then he decided to do the insane colors. 
I was like, what a jerk. And then, and then I watched this and I was like, I wish it was in black and white. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I liked it, and I and a lot of the reviews. I, th- I think a lot of people are are down with the lighting and the set design. Like, I don't, positives. I don't like it. I don't think it fits look, the fucking shit that we're watching. It, it doesn't like line up. I didn't. I didn't get that feel. But I. I actually want to backtrack. So I'm. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and and say you absolutely hated this. No. Okay. Okay. No. So. I have a lot of feelings about it, but I I don't hate I, it. I do. First off, I thought it was going to be like the biggest, the world's biggest piece of shit, right? Yeah. And then some of the earlier reviews were like, "This is the worst fucking thing yeah. I've ever seen." And like thirty minutes into it, I'm like, "I don't know what these people are talking about." Like, it's perfectly fine. Um, I'm just gonna jump the gun in and say, probably my biggest problem with this is that Rob Zombie needs to hire. A screenwriter exactly. because he can't tell a joke for fucking shit, dude. His joke, I honestly laughed the entire movie, but not because it was funny. There's there's jokes that are so shitty and so juvenile that it just made me laugh because they were falling. Like mo- usually, jokes fall flat when yeah. somebody tells it in person. I have never seen like the air sucked out of a room that just I was sitting in by by a joke failing so badly, and that was every joke that he wrote in this movie, like, dude. Just. Just swallow your ego and hire a fucking screenwriter. That is my number one thing about this movie and about Rob Zombie is you don't know how to fucking write. You don't know yeah. how to write. Our friend Lexi, I was like talking to her about it and I was like, he doesn't know how to write. Like, why Why is this? And she's like, well, like, listen to his fucking songs. And I was like, okay, fair. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I love his music, but like, when you listen to the lyrics, like... The guy's not a fucking writer. The guy's not a wordsmith, if you will. Um, he really, really desperately needs a fucking writer. Like, again, like Joe's saying, like, drop the fucking ego, dude. This isn't your thing. It honestly makes me question whether, like, Devil's Rejects had, like, a ghostwriter or something in it. Because um, <laughs> the, the dialogue's really good. Dialogue's really good. It flows. It's it, There's no real, like, wasted time in Devil's Rejects. And if you look at his other shit, there's just, especially this. There's just moments of just, I don't even, there's no plot to this movie. Like, there's actually no plot. Like, there's no, there's, there's no, the story, there's no peak, there's no trouble, nothing, nothing bad happens. It's just like this thing that A to B. So, so, so. I would say, I would argue because it's an origin story, right? Let's, yeah. let's clear that up first. It's an origin story of the monsters. The arc should have been winning over Grandpa because that is what they they hammered in really hard. Uh, he falls in love sure. with Lily. Grandpa doesn't hate him. That should be the arc. He resolves that like almost immediately. <laughs> Lily, and here's the other problem with that. And and I would argue that maybe that arc isn't even the best arc because I thought the same thing. I was like, that should have been the arc, and then I was like, well, maybe it shouldn't have because. We all know they fucking end up together, and Grandpa always fucking busts Herman's chops. So it's like, is that really an arc? Because we know where the fucking ending goes to that. I, I do, I do see it here. I, I get they could have done that, but like you said, dude, Lily and Herman just fall in love, and that's it. That's the end of the fucking plot of that. There's no like in the middle, like Grandpa or Count in this is like, hey, I don't think you guys should get married, and they're like, okay, and that it does nothing. It, like, <laughs> He's just he tries speaking. to make he tries to make a spell, and I know we're jumping around. He tries to make a spell of like the man of Lily's dream, so she'll so she'll see this person fall in love with him and won't marry Herman. Yeah. And he realizes that he fucks up the spell, and, and he's just like, "Well, that's I guess that's the end of that." Wow. And then, and then he, he walks her down the aisle in the next scene. <laughs> it's like, what? And then another arc they could have gone with is like trying to get their home, the famous home. home on 1313 Mockingbird Lane, which makes an appearance in the movie in the last 10 minutes. The last 10 minutes of the movie. Which, by the way... It's so, a beautiful set design. It looks great. Like You want you want to see the monsters in that house in more. That house. For more. Okay, so I don't want to jump around, but I have to, because like this is yeah. just making me so fucking crazy. Like, dude, it makes my... Like, I'm not a screenwriter. But it's not hard to, like, put together this fucking movie to make people be like, oh, shit, because you cut 30 minutes off the end. You have them end. You either have them end buying 1313 Mockingbird Lane. Set up a sequel. And then you're like, like, it's like your last shot where it's like, boom, we got the house. Great. 
awesome ending. Let's, I can't wait to see what happens once they get in the house. Agree. Okay. They, not only do they get the house within like five minutes, they're like, let's just move there. They move to the house. (laughs) They move to the fucking house. And then the movie has to keep going. Now they're in the fucking house and we're not even getting any like Mockingbird Lane shit. So you get, you get an additional 10 to 15 minutes in Mockingbird Lane without like the benefit of being in Mockingbird Lane. And you're like, what, what am I fucking watching? Like, what's the end? And then you're like, oh, I know. They'll end this with Lily being like, I'm pregnant. Has, as a kid, right? Yeah. Guess what? You fucking don't get it. You don't get anything. It just fucking, and the movie just ends randomly. It falls <laughs> so short on every angle. And again, I want to be clear. I didn't hate this as much as I thought I would. And I don't think it's absolutely terrible. I think there's are, I think there are some pluses to it, which we should go into next. Yes. But it just falls so flat and it goes back to both of our points. He needed to hire. Honestly, as soon as they told Rob, like, you're making this for Netflix and it's going to be geared towards kids, hire screenwriters. Like, this is out of my wheelhouse. I'm hiring a screenwriter. There is, this movie is for kids. There is nothing at any point in time in this movie that would hold a kid's interest. And also, it's entirely too long. This movie is entirely Wait, too long. It doesn't need to be an hour and 40 so minutes. It's so fucking insane, dude. There's some scenes. I'll, I'll point them out. But um, His original cut was two, hour, two and a half hours. <laughs> fucking insane. This guy's a fucking maniac he's a fucking maniac and here i I have a couple things and then we can fucking move on from this but i don't hate it i don't hate it i don't know if rob will ever work again like in terms of like a a, like a big studio movie or anything i don't think that's gonna happen ever again i my theory about this and i think i might have even mentioned it on the show because i had this theory as soon as they announced he was doing it my theory on this was kind of like this was the studio being like this is like the studios being like all right Rob this is your last fucking shot we're going to let you take the fucking reins because part of being a director is making like good decisions about the whole f- process right like it's not just the shooting it's the whole thing right it's the whole creative thing. control and i feel like it was like okay Rob like last chance what do you do and you know they were sitting there being like, hopefully he doesn't, you know, hire his wife. Hopefully he thinks outside the box. Maybe he'll hire a writer. Let's just see what he does. Let's see what he, like, changes up, knowing that this might be his last opportunity. And he does everything the same. <laughs> <laughs> and the studio's probably like, there you go. Lesson learned. No, no more fucking money for this fucking guy. He doesn't know what to fucking do w- when given the reins to, to a property. Um but that said, I, I didn't hate it. What I think, I was like trying to think about how to explain it, and I can't explain it that well. I think it was, um, I think, how do I even say this? I think it's his worst movie, but not because it was like so fucking bad. It was just so benign and so fucking boring. Like, it was so unoffensive and just like, I was just like, what am I even fucking want? It was two fucking hours and it was just like, and to me it ranks the lowest of his mo- movies, but it's not a bad movie. Or I, I don't know how to explain you, that. You would rank this below Halloween 2 and 3 from Hell? I'd watch this all day over those two. I'd have to rewatch them. <laughs> <laughs> I really, dude. I don't like Herman, and I don't like Lily in this. And okay, so, so so I wanted, yes. So I wanted to highlight more negatives, but I do want to highlight positives yeah. before we get into the movie. But but what was the guy's name? Uh, Jeff Daniel Phillips as Herman. All he has going for him is is the big mouth, right? The, the big what? mouth. Herman Munster. I mean, first off, the voice honestly pisses me off because Herman is he's weird. It's like it's like a real life. Dude, he, Herman's like a, a a real life Mr. Ed. He's just like, you know, <laughs> yeah. making noises and stuff. Jeff is Jeff Daniels' portrayal of that is just yeah. a normal guy painted green. As soon as we meet Herman, he's immediately a rock star, yeah, and a stand up comedian yeah. because he gets the brain of a stand up comedian in the in the TV show, which I love dearly, and I've been rewatching the episodes lately. 
Herman is a Frankenstein. He just yeah. walks through doors. He's a fucking moron. He's a klutz. And that's what makes him funny. Yeah. <laughs> and and his entire portrayal of it just completely missed the mark, in Dude, my opinion. Absolutely completely missed the mark. Murdered it. And and here's my thing too. Again, like with Rob, I get that you want to use your friends or whatever. Oh, and by the way, I didn't finish that thought that I had I was reading that interview with him about talking about why he was using familiar faces. Yeah, yeah. Um, he said, I couldn't risk getting on set in Budapest and going, my leads aren't getting along. They have no chemistry. So that's why I chose the cast I chose. Jeff Daniel Phillips and Sherry Moon Zombie and Daniel Roebuck, they worked together a lot, and I knew they would just fall right into it. Rob, like, I'm sorry, dude. Like, that's part of being a fucking director is, like, yeah. bringing in a, like. Make it work. <laughs> yes. You figure it the fuck out. You don't hire, keep hiring shitty fucking actors to do the same horseshit. And, like. Jeff Daniel Phillips should have said no to this. Honestly, if I were him and some and Rob Zombie was like, "You want to play Herman?" I'd be like, "Bro, like, love you so much. You've done wonders for my career. Do I look like I could play fucking Herman Munster to you? <laughs> do, do do you think I listen to the way I fucking talk? Like, do you think I could be Herman Munster?" And Rob should say, "You're right. Uh, I love the Munster so much. You're not really a fit for Herman." None of that happened though. Everyone was just like, that sounds like a great fucking idea. <laughs> and and that, we were saying that earlier, like as somebody who loves somebody whose biggest hit song is named after a car in the Munsters. He loves the show so much. How can he not recognize that the, the most integ- integral character of this doesn't work? It doesn't fucking work, dude. Like I remember 15, 20 years ago, I listened to him live. Rob Zombie on Stern begging this is before i think it was even before his first movie i think it was even before house of a thousand corpses and he was like because howard's a huge monsters fan also they're like massive fans they like watch they screen the show together and rob was like i just want to make the movie i all i want to do is make the monsters movie like i i love it so much i love it so much for him to come out with this fucking is insane this is fucking nuts this is fucking crazy not it, it should. He had it ass backwards. Like he should have nailed Herman first and foremost, and let everything else fall into place. It's like just make sure Herman is somewhat. I don't care if he's a little bit different. I don't care because, no. like in the TV show, Herman served in the army for some reason. Even though, <laughs> every, even though every time somebody sees him, they throw up or like pass out. But he, he, he has his vest. Uh, and he went to high school. Like he, Her, Herman has a backstory, but you can change that. I, I would forgive yeah. that, but you have to. You have to nail the mannerisms or at least make Herman seem like Herman. And give him and the voice. I need the Herman voice, man. Give him the voice. It had, dude, it has, just a has to be. It. Like, even the laugh. Herman has a hoo 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 yeah, oh, laugh. Dude, the know? greatest laugh. Like, yeah. Just do it. Just fucking do it just once. Just get like, one person to do it. For fan service. Yeah. yeah. Dude, it, it, and I, I'm also a big fan. James and I used to watch this show constantly when he was little. Um, like Some of his first toys were like the Munster Funko Pops. Um, so... Big fan of the show. I'm not going to sit here and claim I'm like a fucking expert at it, but I can tell you some fucking facts that most people probably don't know about the show because I do love it. It's fucking great. Just like, and I do want to say this too, actually positive here. I'll hit one positive for everyone. I'll hit one positive. I actually like the backstory of Herman in this. I was fine with it. Well, I, I thought it was, it was actually like, cool. It, it, it was cool, and it, like I, I like the young Frankenstein aspect of it, of mixing up the brains, right. and, make, and that's why he's a klutz. I am totally fine with that. There are things that I like, which I, I will roll into. I want to hate for a few more seconds. <laughs> I was trying to be, and I mean this sincerely, because we everybody in the entire world rips on Sherry Moon Zombie yes. for always being cast in Rob's films. I know what you're going to say. I think she's fine. I think she's fine in... Uh, Devil's Rejects, I, but what, whatever. But I don't think she's overly great. But I wanted to give her a chance, and I wanted her to nail it as Lily. It it, it could not have been more apparent to me in this movie that she is just a not a good actress. She's not. An she's actress. just not. A, she 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 can't. She's not an actress. Period. She can't deliver lines. Like no. it just. She couldn't stick anything. And the worst part is she has a cameo as a news reporter. And she was actually fucking great as that. Like, just put her in, put her in as small roles. She she played uh, that news reporter, um, it, Debbie something in this, uh, in this, yeah. Oh, Donna uh, Doomley. 
D- Donna Doomley, when Grandpa's watching the TV and they announced that the uh, comedian died, that's Sherry Moon. She doesn't look like herself. Oh, she's I hamming know. it up. She's making like f- silly faces. Joe, that's, that's that's awesome. honestly her Do best that. fucking work I've ever that's seen. Her, that's her best performance ever. Yeah. What the fuck was she doing? <laughs> what is she doing? That's so crazy. I can't believe that's her. Uh, dude, that I now I'm in a like a paradox. Now I don't even understand what's fucking up or down anymore. No, because 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 Rob needs to like. In my opinion, I'm not a filmmaker, but Rob should like s- notice that and and play up to it. Like put her in as goofy, quirky character. She can nail it. She can't deliver lines for an entire movie. That's no. that's not her strength, and that's it's fine. Fucking like, brutal, dude. <laughs> put, her, put her as the news reporter. It's absolutely fucking brutal. It's it's really fucking brutal. And again, it sounds like we fucking hate this movie, but it's it is such a weird thing where I don't. I don't hate it. Like, there's so much wrong with it, but there's some cool things. And, like, I I really didn't want to hate it. And, by the way, I'm seeing a lot of people, like, now just bandwagon hate on it. And it's kind of fucking infuriating me. Um, People being like, I couldn't make it past 30 minutes. It makes no sense. If that, if the first 30 minutes doesn't make sense to you, you you've probably been hit in the head with a fucking tack hammer or something. Because <laughs> I, I, it's very fucking simple. It's a very simple <laughs> th- first 30. It's a very soft first 30. You should follow it. That's the best part of the movie almost is that first 30 minutes. It's fucking great. It's the backstory of Herman. Lily's backstory. Again, Lily's acting isn't great. But I was fine with those scenes. I thought that was cool, kind of cool. Trying to find love and going on dates. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to get into the movie. I I do want to do two more quick uh, hates. Hurley from Lost. First off, I didn't know he was supposed to be a hunchback. I thought he was just fucking fat. But apparently he's a hunchback. And second, how is he? He's an established actor. How is he the worst actor in this entire movie? Oh, that's... I liked him in this. (laughs) Dude, no. He is... Dude, Sean, when... When we are first introduced to him, and there's a zombie for <laughs> there's a zombie for some okay, reason. That, I mean, why was a zombie there? But but Hurley goes, he gets, and that's exactly how he says it. Like, like dude, act a little bit, uh, J- Joe. Joe, you're. L- I'm gonna reframe this for you because I think everything you're saying look is true. Who he's sta- now? This, now, oh, I'm sorry because I'm about to rant. The, it, it, look who he's standing next to, and this is a Richard very Brake. big positive in my eyes. Richard Brake is, is the unbelievable. Actor fucking awesome, unreal, dude. <laughs> unreal. Everything unreal. he's in is unbelievable. As, as that as that mad scientist, he should like the origin story should have just been him trying to build a monster, and I would have loved it because he's fucking awesome. Richard Brake is so fucking good. He also plays and Count. He Orlock. plays Nosferatu. Yes. <laughs> he plays Nosferatu in this movie. He's He's fucking awesome. Dude, and his Nosferatu is fucking sick. Okay. They just Count announced Orlock. that there's a new Nosferatu movie, and I was like, dude, please please just cast. Dude, the, if you're not casting Break as it, you fucked up. Dude, <laughs> dude Break, Break is unfucking real in this, and how he's gotten tied up with Zombie is so fucking crazy to me. <laughs> it's so fucking crazy. Look at his list, too, dude. He's been in tons of shit. I didn't even realize how many movies Richard Break is in. Like, he's, that, he's in a lot of stuff, and that, he dates back. I used to. Sorry. No, no. I was just gonna say it's 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 just crazy because he. I don't think he really has to do any Rob Zombie movies. No, I think he's just genuinely like. I think he's having fun. Yeah. I, I think that's ultimately what it comes down to. Well, you if you're the like best actor fun. on the scene, like, come on, like, just crushing it. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably not even that hard of work, and you just show up and fucking act, and you're better than everyone on set. <laughs> Everyone's just mystified by you, like, holy cow. <laughs> I would sign up for every one of those, dude. You just go through a you're going through a depressive episode. Just ask Rob if you could fucking be in the movie. <laughs> I'm having a rough time. I'm questioning my acting skills. Um, no, but you're right. So he's next to Hurley. I liked the I liked the dynamic. Here's what I'm gonna say. Here's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna flip it on you. I'm gonna flip the Hurley thing on you. Yes, Hurley is an actor, <laughs> supposedly. Um, <laughs> You show up to Rob's movie. He gives you the script and you read EGATS on the paper. How are you going to fucking deliver that, my dude? Like, come on, come on. You probably, dude, the first line is EGATS. <laughs> and you probably ask Rob, like, hey, how do you want my guy to like say this? Cause it's not 1930 anymore. Like, how do you, is it tongue in cheek? And he's like, yeah, just say it. You're like, okay, I'm just going to read my lines, I guess. And, <laughs> fucking cash my check and be on my way. 
<laughs> like I'm just gonna flip it on you for See, that. <laughs> we just spent we just spent 34 minutes talking about what we hate about it, and and somehow I'm, I'm starting to like the movie. I'm starting to like the movie more yeah. because, <laughs> because because I'm laughing, and that, that's what happened when I watch like. Again, we're gonna get into it in more detail. Uh, Rob wrote this movie for kids, and he has our two main characters dress up as Sonny and Cher and sing "I Got You, Babe" in its entirety. No kid's gonna get that, bro, bro, I, <laughs> dude. And there's so many fucking references to the '60s, dude. Dude, dude Car Paul, 54, where, where are you? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> Joe, when I heard that, I was like, and and again, what am I, my? X is not positive. My my negative is not positive. Ro- who the fuck was Rob making this for? <laughs> Dude, it's PG. Okay, so you've already you've already alienated your hardcore fan base. It's PG. <laughs> so okay, Rob's gonna make a kids movie. Psych. No, he's not. I'm gonna film it like a fucking <laughs> '70s exploitation film. I'm gonna make <laughs> jokes that no one understands. Yes. Dude, we were on the same page because the whole time when it has those like weird cuts with like, <laughs> like Dude. The, the spirals and stuff, I'm like, this is a, this is a grindhouse flick somehow. <laughs> Which like then make it R and do that, but like, who are you <laughs> trying to appeal to? And then, uh, oh, Car Fifty Four, where are you? I, Dude, my head almost fucking exploded. Our so generation fun. doesn't and, and know that. <laughs> our generation doesn't know that, and, and uh, the only reason I do is because I used to watch Nick at Night religiously, right. and Fred Gwynn who played Herman Munster and Al Davis, who played grandpa in, in the Munsters yeah. are both in car 54. Where, where are you? So I'm sure that's, I, I'm not sure I'm positive. That's why he put that in there. Cause it's like a nice homage. Who's getting it. Dude, Who's what? getting it? Unless you're a fucking loser nerd like us. Or you know? Put it on the fucking, like make it on the TV or something. Don't make Herman like wink at the camera and be like a car 54. Where are you? <laughs> because he's trying to call 911 because his neighbors look normal. That- <laughs> That's how he wedges it in They there. just spent right. an entire year in France with humans, and they comment on it. And, and then, but for some <laughs> reason, when he leaves the house, he's like, <laughs> And you're absolutely right. Uh, throwing it on, like, having having Grandpa sit down and watching, like, uh, what was that old TV channel that, that you watch? Oh, like me TV, me oh, TV, oh, me, TV. Yeah, me, me TV. Like have him put on that that channel and have Car Fifty Four. Where are you? And yeah. that that would like make anybody pop. Like oh shit, and like have Herman and Al Davis in the scene. on the screen. Yeah. Oh shit, they're like that's them having Herman <laughs> scream it, <laughs> scream it out loud. <laughs> it's fucking insane. It's so fucking. Weird. His choices are so fucking bizarre. Rob just doesn't know what he's doing. And again, like. I don't think this movie is that bad, but I don't think anyone's going to be like, yeah, Rob, we want you to, we're signing you back up for another movie. I think they'll be like, good job. <laughs> Dude, it's kind of like Adam Sandler's uh, Hubie Halloween, where I don't think it was good. And I think there was things that made me laugh and I don't think it was absolutely terrible, but when am I going to watch it again? <laughs> you know what I mean, like, I'm not, I'm not going to watch any of these again. All right. So I want to go through the cast. Dude, 37 minutes. Um, do you... <laughs> I have a question here. Do you think Rob could have done this better? I mean, no, because he doesn't know how to write. But but no. But but let's just forget that. Do you think Rob could have done this better as a TV series or a limited series? Yep. Yep. Because yep. like a six story arc. It's almost it's one hour each. It's almost like that in the movie. Like it. <sighs> It's almost like little 30 minute episodes kind of, but that doesn't work literally when you just combine them and put them right next to each other. It doesn't fucking work at all. Yes. Um, the origin what episode one, how, right. how Herman gets made. The episode house one. is an episode. The selling the house. Episode two, right. Lily trying to find a date. Right. Episode yes. three, them meeting. Right. Episode four, grandpa hating him. It would have worked so much better. Cause that's what it kind of was. It was like very tiny story arcs that, told the yes. movie that's really what it was so i was like i if rob had just done that made it like six seven episodes a whole episode because like that we'll get into it but lester uh lily's brother uh is in this he makes he ma- he made an appearance uh and that's a great like because i mean that is what happened right like that is a that is an episode in the movie lester was a bad businessman werewolf in the show yes Make that the episode where Lester tries to fucking sell the house out from the fucking family. Like, yes. 
And it, you can also keep telling the Lily and Herman story through that, but like make that an episode because it made no sense. Cause Lester just shows up like four times in the movie and you're like, are we really still pretending that that's part of this movie? Like, wait, that that's <laughs> insane. Cause he just shows up and it's like a lady's like, get the house. And he's like, okay. And then you wait 40 minutes and then Lester shows back up and is like, Hey lady, yeah. I got the house. And you're like, what is and that, that lady? <laughs> grandpa's ex-girlfriend like he he crams way too much into no explanation on that no it just like throws it out there that he's a she's a scorned woman of grandpa's which like that's a fucking funny if you could expand on it for a minute but you don't just fucking leave it there like yeah you and it's a movie so cut it (laughs) don't fucking do it (laughs) um Anyway, um, what did he cut out of the 2.5 hours? I I can't even fucking imagine. I can't even fucking imagine. I can't even fucking imagine. The shit he left in is like, actually, (laughs) some of it is fucking alarming. Some of it is fucking alarming. I have them noted, too. Um, The CGI also was really rough, but low budget. I'm fine with it. And I think he went a route where it was intentionally stupid looking, sort of, in some aspects. Like at the beach, like the the fin in the water is like... Yeah, yeah. It's like Tim and Eric almost like their animation. It's really bad, but like, it's not, they, sh- he, he should have went like a little bit more overboard with it, I think. Or just okay. went like really bad practical effects, like the TV show. I agree. Like, clearly just a guy with a fin on his back swimming by. Like, that would have been great. I would have been fine with that. All right. So here's your cast Jeff Daniel Phillips as Herman. He was also Shecky Von Rathbone and Zombo. Um, yes. He was in Halloween 2, Lords of Salem, 31, and 3 from Hell. Sherry Moon Zombie as Lily. I'm not even going to go into that. Uh, Daniel Roebuck as the Count and Ezra Mosher, who's an interviewer. He was in The Devil's Rejects, Halloween, Halloween 2, Haunted World of El Super Bisto, 31, and 3 from Hell. I had no idea that this guy was like the Rob Zombie guy. <laughs> He's in everything. Absolutely, absolutely everything. Uh, Richard Brake as Dr. Wolfgang and Count Orlock. Uh, he was in Halloween 2, 31, and 3 from Hell. Uh, you got um, Sylvester McCoy as Igor. He wasn't in anything. Jorge Garcia. By the way, do you know who Jorge Garcia's character's name? It's a, it's a floop. <laughs> it's fucking unreal. <laughs> Having a hunchback. <laughs> And naming some other guy Igor, and I know why. I know why the other guy's name is Igor, but like, what are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you floop, floop. <laughs> uh, Miss Cassandra Peterson, uh, better known as Alvira, has makes an appearance as Barbara Carr, the real estate yeah, agent. Real estate. She was also in the Haunted World of El Super Bisto. D. Wallace as a Good Morning Transylvania's announcer. She was in Halloween, The Haunted World of El Super Bisto, Lords of Salem, and Three from Hell. Yep. You got uh, Pat Priest as the Transylvania Airlines announcer, and she is the original Marilyn. Glad to the see second that. Mar- the second Marilyn. Oh, she wasn't the first one? She wasn't the first. The first one dead? Yes. Mm, bummer. Um, Butch Patrick... <laughs> Maybe like the most like rude cameo of all time. Like, hey, hey, Butch, we're making a monsters movie. We want you. We want you in it. Oh, by the way, you're gonna wear uh, like a giant fake robot costume. <laughs> well, fun fact: he's the Tin Can Man. Yes, and there's an episode in season one of the Monsters called the Tin Can Man, where Butch has to make or Butch is like failing school and he has a science experiment and he makes the Tin Can Man, which is a shitty robot. Correct. So. Yeah, yeah. And so it's cool, but like also like it would have been nice to just see like Butch's face. I mean, would it have been probably not? But like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? I do. I do. <laughs> Uh, and that's really it. Oh no, Thomas Boykin uh, as Lester. He was in as Lester from Hell. Um, and oh, one more I want to highlight: Fred Corey as the Raven, uh, the cuckoo clock, alarm clock, uh, famous in the monsters that always insulted Herman. Um, Fred Corey is the drummer from Cinderella. Why he got <laughs> cast in this, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> 
Re- that's who Rob's Rob's one favor to call in was. Like, th- dude, that's the other thing. Rob could call a lot of people, and like, like you're saying, like, yeah, it's a small budget. How's he gonna land people? It's fucking Rob Zombie, dude. Like, he knows enough people that he could. He could swing something, man. He could swing something. Like, dude, if you or me were famous and they were like, Rob would really like it if you could just do this movie, I'd be like, fuck yeah. Like, yeah. You know, like, I, I would love to work just to hang out with Rob. Um, I, I still feel that way after yeah. all this, even though Rob <laughs> would hear this and place, place a restraining order on us. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, Willie, Willie. Um, okay. Are we ready to get into the movie or no? I am. Okay. Can I just say one more thing? Wait. Sorry. I, I have one more note before we start. Is okay. Cool. Um, so I read a bunch of like reviews about the movie. And again, like, I, I don't think I, I think you'd have to be insane to look at this and be like, it's fucking perfect. First of all, the new trend on Wikipedia is so hilarious. These fucking shitty websites and podcasts that like write themselves into the critic area of like, so this thing said Carl Smart of Outer Haven. So I was like, what the fuck is that? Looked it up. It's like the <laughs> smallest fucking website I've ever seen. It's from Australia. <laughs> fucking guy is a fucking idiot. Anyway, gave the film a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Writing, coming from a pure fan perspective, The Munsters is one of the best reboots, adaptations of an original work ever made. He also states, if you walk away from the Munsters with a negative look on the movie, you have either one of two problems. You either are not a Rob Zombie fan and just want an excuse to bag his filmmaking style once again, or you haven't watched the Munsters TV show in a long time. I would love to fight Carl Smart. (laughs) Dude, Carl, I hope somebody sends this to your fucking ass. Fly out to America, I'll beat the shit out of you. That's the dumbest fucking, most dummy shit I've ever heard in my fucking life. You can look at this, like, me and Joe do not hate this fucking movie, but it's impossible to look at it and be like, you fucking nearly perfect. Like, what? No, it's not. It's far from perfect. Like, <laughs> and, and I have that opinion which contradicts the two things that he said you had to be. I am a fan of the TV show and I want Rob to do well. Like I, I yes, I actively root for this. <laughs> dude, I wanted if, this to be if great. This came out. If this was hit out of the park, I would have been fucking so excited, dude. I, that's all I wanted. <laughs> oh. I, I couldn't, I couldn't be happier. That's what happened. <laughs> I know. Honestly, I know. I know, dude. Like it's, it's fucking, it's, uh, and I love being a contrarian. Like I would love nothing more to be like to all the Rob Zombie haters, but like, go fuck yourself. So he, he knocked us out the park. I actually find like a lot of Rob's, um, very pro Rob fans that like li- listen to the show and talk to us hated this more than anything like he's done. <laughs> like his hardcore fan base, I don't think is thrilled by it. Which I get, <laughs> FYI, because the fucking jokes are fucking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get into the movie. So, the and we are already forty seven minutes in, but it's fine. Uh, f- so the movie opens up. We Joe mentioned this. It opens up with a zombie, which is fine. <laughs> which is fine. But what I thought There's was so face melting. So and you know, so I watched it with James, and me and James are going to record something and probably release it on Patreon or something because. I, I wanted a kid's point of view, right? Like, cause it's PG. I was like, maybe it's just misses the mark for us. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's just for kids. I don't know. Like, do kids maybe like it? I don't know. Um, and like James was like, as kids do when they watch movies, they talk through the whole fucking thing and try to predict it. But he was like making like accurate predictions. Right. So like, Cause it's very creepy. It had like a tales from the crypt intro vibe at the beginning of like Richard break in the graveyard. And we're like, it's very close up of the graveyard. It actually got me really fucking pumped. Um, it looked great. And James was like, Oh, they're going to pop out and be like, welcome to our home. And I was like, Oh yeah. Like, of course that's what they would do. That's not what they fucking do. For some reason, the zombie just turns and looks at the camera and it says the monsters over. <laughs> This character is not character. a real character. <laughs> the, dude, the zombie turns and looks at the screen, and it's supposed to be the reveal. It just says the monsters. And I was like, <laughs> that, none, that's not a monster. So that's cool. No one in this fucking scene is a monster, but 
<laughs> All right, cool. Like it's a good way to start. Um, Richard Brake is just fucking great. Richard Brake is just the highlight of the movie here. Um, great. They're collecting body parts, um, specifically very talented body parts. Um, so the zombie, <laughs> which just so happens to be like the world's most famous pianist, like <laughs> dude, they fucking shoot him in his head, and Richard Brake's like, "Do you know who that fucking zombie was?" Mm-hmm. Or he's like, or Floop is like, no. He's like, that's the world's best pianist. Oh, okay. So they take his hands. Um, cut to Grandpa, who we know is not Grandpa yet. No, just the Count at this point. Also, that's kind of a bummer. That kind of bums me out with the character part. Like, I, I know it doesn't mean anything, but I just hate not thinking of him as Grandpa. Although, by the way, he's grandpa. He's grandpa as fuck. Like, he's not even... (laughs) He's grandpa as fuck. And uh, the decision to make his hair like that, (laughs) we we haven't highlighted yet. Uh, One of the most uncalled for decisions, perhaps in cinema, in in history. Why? (laughs) I posted something on my Instagram, because I've been watching The Monsters in the morning, and when I work from home, I bring Shay to school. Um... So I'll throw on like a couple episodes and Shay is like infatuated with it. She thinks it's funny because yeah. Herman, you know, banks his head on stuff. Yeah. Uh, so she's familiar with grandpa. She, she saw this one because I had it on. She came in the room and she goes, dad, I don't like his face. I'm like, what, what is, she was like very upset by it. I'm like, yeah, I know. It's, I know Shay. Like me too. It's painted bright blue. It's fucking insane. It's it fucking sucks. He's got a fucking ridiculous <laughs> mustache. Like, <laughs> Rob just like can't fucking help himself on some of this shit. And it like makes yeah. me crazy. He cannot once <laughs> just be like, I'm not going to give this guy weird facial hair. I'm not going to give somebody weird facial hair in this movie or weird hair. I'm just going to make it like the source material. I'm just going to do it the right way. He can't. He's just like, what if he had a fucking curly Q mustache and fucking wings coming out of his fucking head? Like, <laughs> Rob, what what are you doing, dude? <laughs> what are you now, doing? Did you like Daniel Roebuck as... I was going to ask you that. I think he was pretty good, actually. I don't think I hated him. I, 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 I li- Actually, I shouldn't say that. I, I didn't think he was even bad. Like I, I, I think I liked most of his work in it. I, I think the same. I thought he was pretty good. I think he captured Al Lewis's yes. mannerisms and he. I mean, the prosthetics that they put on his nose and stuff. He, like he looked uh, facial hair aside, he looked like yes. Grandpa from the show. I think he is the biggest example of Ross jokes failing because he yes he was not yes. funny. It, was, it wasn't his fault. It's not the delivery's fault. It's just the source material was not good. It, it's it's hard like, to Ross differentiate. Here, we, I was gonna say right here we when when we're introduced to him he's just immediately like oh my bad <laughs> it's hard to it's it's hard to watch a movie and differentiate like a bad actor from like bad writing sometimes I think I think it's very easy to be like he sucks and it's like n- no he might not it might be the fact that he has to read fucking dog shit like um and, and this guy this grandpa is kind of in that vein because like i think he's a great grandpa like i i agree but the grandpa jokes dude grandpa's jokes in the monsters are fucking off the wall they're so sick dude there's he burns herman like on the regular and just absolutely obliterates him with fucking old school humor like it's great yes. it's great and so and that's not here by the way and by the way this guy fucking hates herman like like if you had a fucking good writer, man, like you could have, it would have been amazing. It could have been so fucking funny, dude. For an example, grandpa gets a call from Lester, which is in a few scenes, but I just want to highlight that while we're on the topic of it. Lester is scheming for money. And grandpa says, I would rather go into business with Jack the Ripper. And he says, who, by the way, is no Jack the Tipper. It's really embarrassing. Is that is, is that a serious joke? <laughs> Dude, he, he goes. Uh, he barely does ten percent. What? Again, this is a PG movie. Who the fuck? Who's that joke for? You think James is gonna be like, oh my god, ten percent? That's fucking ridiculous. 
<laughs> Jack the Tipper. Like that's a, that's the problem with his jokes. He just grabs like the lowest hanging fruit of humor and just makes it not <laughs> makes it completely irrelevant. Which is funny because like probably if you showed old Munsters show clips to people, most people are gonna be like, "This is corny fucking humor. It's sure. stupid. Yeah. It's low hanging fruit, dude. It's light years above." anything in this fucking movie <laughs> like <agree>. like lights <laughs> um so grandpa has an igor which i kind of mentioned before it's his butler again a positive cuz igor was grandpa's bat in the show and yeah. they will show what happens to igor and this is the igor from the show so it was like yes. oh awesome that's really cool so i dug that and we learn that okay. Lily's going on a date with Count Orlock, who is also played by Brake, as we mentioned. Um, the first of two cameos from outside monsters. Um, and monsters, yeah. N- no, I'm well, oh, oh, from outside monsters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, I, yeah, got, yeah. I got what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, you know, the fact that he did that, like seeing Orlock in this, like I popped for that. Like I was like, oh shit. Like I was like, that's Dude, cool as fuck. I popped when they said the name. And I was yeah. like, oh, that's cool that they're referencing that. And yeah. then they showed him, and I was like, holy shit. Like, wow. A, dude, cool. A+. Plus. But, like, and Orlock was fine. Like, I, I really liked Orlock. But I think both cameos were the biggest fucking waste of cameo ever. Like, you could have done so much with Orlock. And I, I think they did as much as they kind of could with Orlock. But the the second the cameo, second which especially that was especially. so fucking insane, dude. It probably took a decent amount of work to get allow to allow that cameo in the fucking movie the way they did it. <laughs> and that's what you fucking choose to do. Just cut it. Don't even. Why is that even in here? What are you doing? Like <laughs> the fuck? The epitome dude? of filler. The epitome of filler. Fuck. <laughs> it's, it's fucking psychotic. I. I it's, it was honestly like a little bit heartbreaking because you see it and you're like, oh, <laughs> fuck, that's so sick. And then like three minutes later, it is an afterthought in, in everything. It's just to fill up some time in the movie, which did not need it filling up. FYI. Didn't need it. Didn't need it. <laughs> Two hour runtime. FYI. Um, so Orla- we meet Orlock. Lily's going on a date with Orlock, who Grandpa is really fond of because he's rich. Uh, and... Uh, Break is just amazing as Orlock, and I think he's funny as fuck with the bullshit humor he's given, which is like talking about pictures of rats. I think it, I think it fucking worked. Um, and the first thing you'll notice about Lily with Sherry is just the voice. Um, the way she reads the lines is br- absolutely deadpan. brutal. It's, it's deadpan, dude. And she's like trying to do a Lily voice and a Lily cadence, and it does not hit at all. And, like, back to that reviewer who was like, you're just not a fan of the show. No, dude. Like, if you're a fan of the fucking show, you should be like, oof. Like, you, everything's kind of like a kick to the gut. Like, you're happy to see it there. Like, you're happy to see Lily. But then you're like, ugh. Like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, kind of a bummer. Kind of just bums you out. Um, and, and Lily, again, like, Sherry, and I hate doing this to, to female actors um she's supposed to be playing a younger vampire and i know she's like 150 years old or whatever she's supposed to be playing like a younger vampire herman's young this is their younger years sherry is not even and i'm not saying she looks old because she had a ton of makeup on her vibe was just not a young person correct like she put out a vibe of just like an older woman that you were just like uh, like and Herman, I think, does, as, as much as I don't like it, he does give the vibe of, of a young Herman. Like, he 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 captured Agreed. that. He captured that. Like, Agreed. he's very young behaving. And Sherry doesn't carry that vibe. Um, no, she acts like somebody who's, like, just getting over a divorce. Yes, after, like, yes. That's, two, a, that's actually decades. a great, like, that's actually a great thing. That, honestly... Again, if Rob saw this, like, just the way she's acting, like, you could have written it that way, and it would have worked a little bit better for her. Like, she's 150 years old. Would we pretending this is the first love of her life? Like, come on. Yeah. Fuck. She could have been uh, Orlock's ex. Could have had a lot, a lot to work with there. Oh, she dude. used to be married to Count Orlock. Oh, dude. That would have been so sick. And then, like, Orlock just appears constantly throughout it. Like, he's not even, like, the the, the mean boyfriend. He's just, like... 
the clingy ex who's like, I'm still her friend. <laughs> <laughs> we have joint custody of the fucking rats. Rob Zombie sucks as a writer. Just give me the fucking this, we're just throwing shit at a wall right now and it works so much better. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, joint custody of the rats is good. Um anyway, okay. So that's Lily. Um that's break as Orlock. We cut to another character. That is crowbarred into this insane story, uh, and it is Lester, the brother, who is, yes. again, a real character uh, from the show. Lester Dracula, I believe is his full name. He's He is on Lily. He's he is Lily's man. brother. He's <laughs> Lily's brother. And... And, and it, you know, explains, uh, Eddie's weird look as a kid. Like, is he werewolf or is he vampire? He's a little bit of both. He's a little bit of both, I think. Um, and I'm going to just say it. It kind of annoys me, uh, that Rob's only diverse casting choice in this is a guy in a giant fursuit. It honestly, like, (laughs) and like his obsession with the, like, siblings with different parent type of thing. Like he's done it in the past. And like, to just like, this is his only diverse casting. Cause it's like the different looking brother. It, it just like, I don't know. It just like, it was just, it was just like, so I was like, Rob, come on, man. Like what the fuck? Like couldn't cast any, like whatever. But anyway, that's <laughs> Lester. He'll show up three more times. Fucking dude, he ends the movie. He ends the movie. He, he does end the movie, <laughs> and it somehow makes sense why he's back there. Which, to Rob's credit, uh, good job because nothing, nothing ever indicated you would you would be able to pull that back around. But, <laughs> but I, I do like that when you're first introduced to Lester, you know, because he's a wolf man. Yeah, he's with a gypsy, and there's a crystal ball. So it's very much like very the movie cool. The Wolf Man. Yeah. So Rob, like, he pays. He can pay. Good homage to like yeah, movies he loves. Shit he loves. He just can't do it for you know an hour and forty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like it's almost like he just comes up with the homages and then like <laughs> reverse engineers a movie. <laughs> out of it. <laughs> like he's like, I need Herman to say Car Fifty Four. Where are you? So how do let's I do write that? a <laughs> script around this. <laughs> That's. <laughs> I actually am on board with that theory. <laughs> he just like collects a bunch of things that he would put in the movie and then tries to write a script around it without removing any of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Lester, um, he was summoned by this gypsy who is um, grandpa's ex. And he, she wants to um, uh, take over his house. In Transylvania. Yes. Okay. So she's going to use Lester to do that. Because Lester owes her money. Lester. Yeah. That's that's Lester. That's, well, that's Lester. He's got a gambling problem. He's got a gambling problem. Uh, we go back to Count Orlock and Lily for a little bit. Where Orlock. And then this is like, again, Rob. <laughs> this was like one of the cringier parts. And I loved Orlock in it. But like. Rob, who the fuck? This is, is not his fault. This? Rob, it's not his fault. No, Rob. Rob decides that like the funniest bit in the movie is going to be if Orlock starts dancing for like a full minute just to music, <laughs> while Lily's like, "Oh, intro music." By the way. No, nothing's like Rob scored. The, the, there's no white zombie. He, the guy has nine thousand songs dedicated to the monsters, <laughs> but he does an electro an electro score and. Orlock is dancing in front of a sign on his door that says, if the t- <laughs> fucking Rob, man, if the tomb is rocking, don't come knocking. <laughs> Again, a children's movie. This is PG. Um, also, in that town, there was a Living Dead Girls, uh, like a saloon. Hmm. It said Living Dead Girls, which. Cool. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I noticed the don't come a knocking thing because I was like, man, like. It's PG. Are you making this for kids or not? Like, I can't, like, because my kid asked me what the fuck that means. I'm just going to, like, fucking punch Rob in the fucking face. <laughs> Stevie Ray Vaughn reference. <laughs> um, back at Grandpa's, he's watching the news, and we find out the re- the death of the Rathbone brothers. <laughs> One is this, and this is, like, like again, like, some of this shit, some of this stuff is kind of funny, right? Like, the news of the Rathbone brothers dying is fucking funny. 
Because we agree. Uh, one, the comedian dies. They show a clip of the comedian who's dog shit. And she's like, the Rathbone, the comedian, is blah, 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 blah. And she's like, oh, by the way, his brother also just died, who's the smartest man in the world. <laughs> That's fucking funny, man. That's fucking stupid and funny. That's funny, but they show him they show him speaking on the news at the International Smarty Pants Conference. <laughs> Dude, an adult <laughs> an adult wrote that. The International Smarty Pants Conference. And actually, these people that are like, if you don't look, you must not like the real monsters if you didn't like this. Listen, then you don't get the fucking humor of the the original monsters because it's actually, it's actually much funnier than this. Like, yeah, it's dumb, older humor, but like Rob's trying to emulate that and it sucks. It sucks. He's not doing it because he's not a writer because he's not a fucking writer. So he, he thinks like an idiot and is just like oh i just write bad jokes no those jokes weren't bad those jokes are fucking funny they're just old school they're just an older type of comedy they're not bad yeah. though they're not bad jokes from the show um and rob just decides to do fucking shit like smarty pants smarty pants <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness um so he sends jorge to go collect this brain of the smartest man alive not the dumb comedian and what do you know? Oh, Rap, our, um, Amadeus Wolfgang, uh, Richard Brake's character since, yeah. since Jorge, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Floop. Just want to clarify that. Yeah. Floop, Floop, <laughs> Floop goes out. And by the way, R- Richard Brake couldn't be more clear. He's like, please don't take the fucking idiot's brain. Take the fucking <laughs> smart guy's brain. It's so explicit. He's like, one's name's fucking Shelly. One's name is this. Only take this one. And Floop's like, okay, immediately takes the wrong fucking brain. (laughs) Which is great. It's great. And I like that origin, like you said, of Herman. And I like that it's like a young Frankenstein reference. Yeah, it's fucking cool. I was so down with that. I was so down with that. Um, So that's going on. Um, They start building Herman here. And Lily. (laughs) They start building Herman. And again, to rob just not knowing how to write humor just thinks that the ultimate gag is having Hurley eating a fucking sandwich while, while, while putting together a corpse. Yeah, of course he's eating a sandwich. These it's fucking 900 so pounds. These, <laughs> these, these scenes are so long too. So like, that's the problem with the sandwich bit, right? Like floop eating a sandwich would be fine in a three second scene where it just cuts to him and he's eating a sandwich and it cuts away. And that's the end of the scene. Unfortunately it's floop. Real time eating a six inch grind. Real time eating a hoagie <laughs> and making Uranus jokes, <laughs> dude. And quite honestly, like, oh, man, it's so funny because he could do like things like the Herman Brain idea. I fucking love. I love it. But then immediately, like, just like kind of undoes everything with like Flute being like, "What if we name him Herman Monster?" And like, like the cheese, ri- yeah. What? And Richard breaks like that's the dumbest fucking name I've ever fucking heard. And, and then still he ends up with Herman Munster as a name. But like, why is he deciding? Like, I, 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 he should have just like left some shit like unexplained. That's what he needed to do because it's cool. Like, yeah, you can origin why he's a goofy fucking idiot for sure. Why he cracks wise constantly. Done. Love it. You don't need to explain his fucking name. Just have him look at something. Like, have him steal another dead guy's name. I don't care. Like, it's dumb as fuck. Just floop being like, Herman, what about Herman Monster? <laughs> Dude, and like a, a two minute gag that, that of Richard giving- Brake being like, Moonster? Monster? Like, okay. Jesus Christ. This is the old, I can't, I don't understand what you're saying routine. <laughs> And then it only comes back around to Floop giving Herman the name because for some reason he becomes his, his best friend. tour manager. He becomes his tour manager. Dude, fucking roadie tour manager. When fucking Lily shows up. He like looks her up and down like a fucking roadie. Like, <laughs> you want to see? Oh, Floop. Fuck. I just got some shit in my eye. Oh, nice. Dude, I got, um, I put that, oh. 
I put this like crap on my foot, like I don't know, like shit that like like arthritis cream and shit, you know, like uh, like icy hot type stuff. Kind of. I didn't think it was like icy hot, but then I got some on my dick before the show started, and I fucking lit on fire, and now it's in my eyeball. So, uh, nice. the fucking night is great. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Lily, while this is happening, while they're building Herman, Lily's lamenting about her terrible dating life, kind of like a, you know, well, I'll never meet the man of my dreams. Um, break and floop. <laughs> Bring Herman to life. Um, uh, okay. Very silly. <laughs> so, so, so I didn't mind them. I actually kind of liked when they were just screaming and their hair was flying in the wind because that's a kind, that's a kind of over the top humor yes. that you want from the monsters. Right. Like, ah, the physical humor, blowing, the like, physical part yeah, is fine. The, yeah. the mad scientist stuff, right? But then he immediately ruins it because Floop is screaming, "It's alive! It's alive!" And he's like, "Oh, I was just talking about my pet cockroach," and he's like stroking it. Like, dude, that's not a gag. That's Nobody knew he had that cockroach. She's like, go fuck yourself. That's the shittiest gag I've ever seen. <laughs> My pet cockroach, which is like, whatever. I don't know. I'm not even going to get into it. Um, <laughs> so Herman is now alive. Uh, Wolfgang break uh, brings him on TV um, to debut basically his new experiment. And we, you know what? We get a little bit of like what Rob would have done with this fucking movie in like an R setting. Cause Richard Briggs like, it's censored from the, like it's censored in the movie. Like it's like wah, wah, every time he swears, but he's like, "Suck my fucking dick! I brought the dead back to life." Type of thing, and you're like, "Oh, that's where Rob wanted to go with this." That's still really not great. <laughs> like it's not, but it's terrible. Uh, but Herman comes on TV, uh, and Lily falls fucking madly in love with him first love at first sight man she's just yeah smitten she's like that is the man of my dreams she's like he's got the most beautiful square head i've ever seen in love so at this moment you're like oh that's gonna be the storyline herman is gonna become successful because they've given him like he has pianist hands he he has these qualities he does have a dumb brain but like that's what's going to happen. He's going to hit it big and it's going to be Lily trying to gain the admiration of Herman and eventually, you know, winning his love and settling down. That is not what happens. She, <laughs> she'll find him in like five minutes and they just are just immediately in love with each other. And that's the end. <laughs> there's no fucking arc. She, 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 it takes her three minutes to fucking find him. He was just on the fucking news. But Herman's character arc happens like, from the time that he's on the news, he immediately starts doing stand up and then he's a rock star singing he's, the joke. He's, sing, he's singing in a band <laughs> and he's touring. What? Yeah. 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 And it's the first time you hear uh, Herman's voice and it sounds like weird Al. <laughs> it's not great. Uh, and apparently that's just Jeffrey, whatever, Phillips, real voice. Anyway, Floop uh, sees the potential in Herman and is like, we're going to make you a fucking star, baby. And then we cut to Herman being a rock star. There's no there's no trial or tribulation or like, hey, we don't believe this Frankenstein can fucking sing. And then he goes and sings. It just cuts to him performing in a full band. He's just fronting, <laughs> fronting a cowpunk band for, for some fucking reason. <laughs> and he's singing. And Lily's at the show. And Lily's at the show. And he's singing the jokes he just told on national television. <laughs> <laughs> the words to the song are the jokes. <laughs> fucking, what are we doing? It's fucking insane. And then, by the way, remember that guy, Brother Lester? He shows up for a split second here uh, to find Lily, who's like, wait, you know Herman? Which he doesn't. And he's like, yeah, just go through that door. So you're like, oh, this will cause a problem. She goes through the door, meets Floop, who's like, who are you? And she's like, Lily. And he's like, hang on. And then 
Herman comes to the door and is like, I love you so much. <laughs> They're immediately in love with each other. Dude, immediately. She's like, you want to go out? And he's like, uh, hang on. Closes the door and is like, whoopee, whoopee. <laughs> and like reopens it and is like, yes, I'd like to go on a date with you. That's the end, dude. There's no more tribulation with those two. There's no Herman and Lily are done. They're fucking hooked up. They're just about married, and that's it, dude. They're just fucking madly in love. There's never a moment where they don't even have, like, the grandpa gets in the middle and Lily reconsiders or Herman reconsiders or anything like that. None of that ever happens. They're done. That storyline is storyline is closed. Yeah, dude, they're fucking – that's it. They've met. They're happy. They're in love. Um, (laughs) Dude, that's so nuts. That's so nuts. Uh – they fall in love. Uh, Herman makes a Bobby Darren joke for all the fucking <laughs> kids in 2022. <laughs> the most Rob Zombie shit ever. Bobby Darren. What is, first of all, is he alive? He can't be. Uh, Bobby Darren died in, wait, Bobby Darren died in 1973. <laughs> <laughs> He's saying Mac, Mac the, the knife, right? Dude, it fucking un fucking real. Did he? He's saying splish splash, I think. Like splish splash. I was. Oh, yeah, he did. Taking Mac a the bath. Knife. He did Mac the knife. Remember uh, Mac the knight? No. The big moon from McDonald's? Oh, shit. Yes. <laughs> remember when, for I would some put reason. him in my movie, Rob. <laughs> remember when, for some reason, dude. Fucking gritty backstory of Mac the knight. <laughs> <laughs> Also PG. <laughs> fucking making fucking. <laughs> I don't even know. Making Sandra D jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Uh, remember when our fucking elementary school teacher made us sing Mac the Knife? Which one? Was it Miss Patterson? No. No. Our, our music teacher, which. I oh, Mr. Get Campbell? In, I could get into that guy. Probably should not have been teaching, FYI. Oh, for sure, dude. <laughs> <The> guy, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, should we talk about, like, <laughs> we definitely no, should. No. But should we call the police, I'm, I guess, is my bigger question. <laughs> Has, like, that ever been, like, vetted? Like, <laughs> what occurred during those, like, years we were in elementary school? The um, 90s were wild, man. They, they fucking were. Like, it was no holds bar. Anyway. Um. <laughs> anyway, uh, Herman sings. It's fucking brutal. Um, Herman makes a Bobby Darren joke. Uh, the screen wipes, which you mentioned, I kind of dug. I kind of dug them. They were exploitation. They kind of had also a little bit of a monsters vibe. Monsters started doing that in later seasons. Um. I love the sped up actors that they did a handful of times. I really love that yep. because that's just yep. classic, right? Like love that he did that. That's great, dude. That's like, there you go. There you go. You did some monster stuff. <laughs> like, congratulations. He has Herman. He has a mirror crack. Cause, cause in the show, whenever Herman passes a mirror, yeah. he cracks, he's so fucking ugly here. He has a crack but it's because he yells at it. He redeems it later on in the movie and has a crack just cause he looks at it. But like, why just have it make that gag throughout like that that's a good yeah. callback to the show yes then we get our so- what, what, hey, hey by the way is herman and lily a fucking allegory for fucking i don't even know what allegory means is is herman and lily a fucking <laughs> metaphor for uh rob and fucking sherry I mean, dude, uh, because probably because Lily, she, she met him dude. at a zombie show at Toad's Place in, and, in New Haven, Connecticut. Yes. And and he immediately just started putting her in anything he could. And everything. Two, yeah. two seconds after Herman and Lily, literally the next scene after Herman and Lily meet, they're singing Sonny and Cher on stage together. In yeah, well, while Herman is dressed like Sonny Bono, 1970s Sonny Bono. <laughs> I wish he was just as 2022 Sonny. Uh, hey <laughs> I mean, technically he is. I know. <laughs> um, and 
there's probably like 15, 20 minutes here of just Herman and Lily just doing Herman and Lily shit, which is like fine, but like it's not a fucking movie. Like this is not a fucking movie. This isn't a plot. Like they're just happily in love. Like it's just nothing is happening. Um, and then we get a second cameo from Gilman, who plays Uncle Gilman. Um, Gilman, the creature from the Black Lagoon, is in this fucking movie. Yes. Which you see him and you're like, oh, okay, it's like supposed to look like Creature from the Black Lagoon. Turns out it is him. And it's him in a meadow universe where he is the star of those creature movies. Like, they go to his house and he's got the posters of like Revenge of the Creature on the wall. And yeah. is like showing Herman the movie and being like, "Hey, look at me on the screen!" Like, it was awesome. That's that's a good cameo. It's fucking amazing. Guess what? It doesn't mean anything. It was just an entire waste of fucking time. <laughs> Gilman has no point in this movie, and that's the last we'll see of him. <laughs> and he doesn't speak. Well, of course he doesn't. But like, he doesn't do much of anything. It's one of the worst costumes I've ever seen. Also, FYI, like, can we just <laughs> talk about that? It fucking sucks. It's, like, it's like something I would make if I was trying to be Gilman, dude. They couldn't. Yes, right. Because like, you couldn't afford like a full Gilman suit, so you just wore a trench coat for the entire time, but with just a giant Gilman mask <laughs> fucking popping out. What are you doing, Rob? Rob, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Dude, trench coat with Gilman fucking idiot, Gilman face. fucking moron, <laughs> fucking idiot. Yeah, just put him in a trench coat. Just cut it. Just cut it, Rob. Rob just needs somebody to say no to him. That's I think his biggest problem. He he has too many yes men around him. Him and Sherry I'm just must board. sit around all breakfast talking about how wonderful they are to each other. Like, which is wonderful. I would kill for a relationship like that. You know, you just love each other so much. Like, Rob's just like, honey, you are just the, I can't believe I married the best actress I've ever met in my life. <laughs> and she's like, Rob, I can't believe I've married the one of the best directors. Good director. Yeah, what? And like, singer. singer. And songwriter. Of all time. <laughs> of history. They're just sitting at breakfast admiring each other. Like, it's fucking wonderful. But, like, what a fucking weird world to live in, dude. <laughs> <laughs> fucking what a delusional world uh all right count hates herman which we all kind of know because they have a i don't want to say in the show it's not as strained but it's you know they don't get along i mean it's not they do because they, they, they scheme well, together yeah that's it's just true. he just never grandpa never passes up an opportunity to just fucking rip on him right like the old the most classic father-in-law gags of all time right right and actually one of my favorite parts of this movie is when they finally do come together at the end for like a split second. And it's not even like honed in on like, oh, they get along now. That wasn't even Rob's point. It was <laughs> Rob just wrote it in like that and it worked. But it was like, oh, Rob, you don't even know that you're writing like something really good right there. <laughs> that should be the fucking arc. Because at the end, when they see the humans her Herman and Grandpa finally agree because Herman's like, we have to fucking move. And Grandpa's like, I couldn't agree more. This is the smartest son-in-law I could have ever fucking had in my fucking <laughs> life. And it's fucking great, right? Like, then you're like, oh, Grandpa and Herman right there. But it's not even, like, honed in on. It's like, fucking Lily's like, stop it. And that's the, that's the end of it. <laughs> you're like, oh, okay. But, like, that's, like, that should have been the payoff, right? Like, they they should have gone like way. There's ahead. so many things like we said that that should have been the payoff that he just he doesn't even dude like they should have gone like, unaware so, of because even their head to head in this is not head to head like you like you no, mentioned that Her, like Herman like Herman doesn't even know he doesn't give a fuck he's <laughs> <laughs> like completely oblivious to it which also makes it weirder because like later in the movie Herman appears to be holding a grudge against him and I was like. There was no indication that Herman ever gave a fuck what Grandpa thought of him at any point in this movie. Like, Grandpa talked a lot of shit in this movie, and Herman was just always like, huh, oh, huh. But then later in the movie, is like, Grandpa, you're fucked. You're staying here. We're leaving you. And, like, Grandpa's begging to come with them. And I'm like, why is this happening? The, Herman never gave any once brief no, moment of being like, fuck Grandpa. No, because there's, there's like a scene where Sherry's like, you know, my dad's kind of hard to deal with. And Herman's like, I'm going to make him like me if it's the last thing I do. And Which is Herman. But he, 
that's fine. Yeah. But he's just like oblivious to the, the, the vitriol that the grandpa has to him, which, which is so extreme for some reason. It's so extreme. Dude, <laughs> when, um, uh, when, when Herman meets the count for the first time, which I think is right here, um, the count yeah, is screaming, count, dude, the screaming at each other, <laughs> but dude, the grandpa's just screaming like, you big stupid fucking idiot. And Herman's like, <laughs> Herman's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, a ten minute gag, a fucking dude, grandpa a ten minute screaming. gag, and the final punchline is a grandpa finally comes down, and Herman keeps screaming, and him being like, "Why are you yelling?" He's like, "I thought you liked it, like, uh, dude." Rob, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that joke is so good. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, Lester's back, by the way. Um, He's back. He just appears and is like, hey, Herman, you're the man of the house. You want to <laughs> fucking you want to fucking sign this sign over the house you don't own to me. And he's like, sure. And Herman signs the house over to Lester. <laughs> A house Herman has no right to only grandpa actually has the right to it. Even Lily does. I love your, your point of how this should have been a mini series because that would be its own episode. Right. right. And like, that's a great they, fucking and then you're episode. Allowed, it's a great episode. And you're allowed for Lester to, to show up unannounced. Cause that's the yes. most sitcom sitcom right. thing I've ever heard. Yes. Brother, a brother, show, a strange brother shows up cons cons the 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 new brother-in-law like that would work you don't need all you need is that 30 minute window yeah fuck to drag this out throughout the movie is fucking nuts (laughs) it's fucking crazy (laughs) and to the point where every time lester showed up you were like oh fuck is this like really a part is this really do i still have to keep following this dude i thought this was like count orlock i thought i wouldn't have to fucking worry about this fucking guy again uh, but no, Lester will continue. I think he's only got two more scenes, so don't don't worry. <laughs> if you think he can wrap that story up in two scenes, uh, he does somehow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wraps up quite well. Um. Anyway, Lily and Herman get married by Tin Can Man, Butch Cassidy. Um, Lily, after they get married, reveals that. Lester is a fucking idiot uh, because Herman was like, hey, I saw your brother Lester. And she's like, you mean that fucking moron? Good thing you didn't go into business with him. I'd fucking divorce you. (laughs) (laughs) The way she explains it is so ridiculous because they're on like a they're they're on like a horse and carriage ride. She's like, oh, only a complete fucking idiot would ever sign a house away to Lester. Like, I hope you didn't do that. I'd have to leave ya. And like Herman's biting his fucking nails like <laughs> <laughs> Which is Herman S. Right. That, that, that right. works. <laughs> it's so stupid. By the way, mine mine is way better. They should have had him chewing off his nails, but instead he's just sitting there like <laughs> Just making that stupid mouth face with his mouth. <laughs> oh my god. Then they go to Paris, which I only want to bring this up because <laughs> later when they see humans they they make a they make a comment. They're like the people are just so ugly here. Like and because it's human beings, there's humans walking up and down the streets while we see them yeah. walking up and down the streets. And like Herman, like puts on a fucking beret, dude. Rob just wanted to cram in all of those old Herman costumes, like like because there were always weird episodes where Herman dressed like a fucking asshole. Like the cabbie leather punk outfit is is from a Monsters episode. And and this is also from a Monsters episode. And that's great. But, like, Rob, like, you don't need to do that. You really don't. <laughs> Why are they in fucking Paris? Uh, another thing about Paris, though, while they're there, is a fun uh, callback, right? We, But why this happens makes no sense. They pick up a newspaper and they're like, oh, a monster in the sewers. So they go into the sewers to catch the monster. Who ends up being Baby Spot, which is their pet Baby dragon Spot. in the show. Dragon. Which is so big, like, the stairs, like, open up, and it's just his fucking snout that pops out. Uh, on the show, you ju- you usually just see, like, an ominous, spiky shadow. Yeah. And it's just like, like, you hear, like, a cat meow, but it's 
a fucking enormous dragon coming down yeah. gothic stairs, you know? It, it's <laughs> and it was cool. It was cool to see that. I I, I dug that. I, I was but like why that happens, Rob, like Rob, did you really have to cram that in like that? Like <laughs> going into the sewers of Paris? What are we what, what I feel is, like I feel like Spot would be more cuz cuz they're in Transylvania where all this weird shit is happening. Why Paris, the sewers of Paris. There? <laughs> the sewers of Paris where nobody seems to see anything out of the ordinary cuz they look at Herman in a mime breaks character and starts screaming. Make makes like all you needed was Spot to be like a stray at Transylvania like Lily's fucking stray, backyard. stray dragon, yeah, like that she takes in. Like, what? What are we doing? We can fucking trip to Paris to get spots. Sewers, sewers in Paris. <laughs> um. Anyway, they lose the house, obviously, because Herman signed it away. Um, but they don't because they're still there for like the next couple scenes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and during this time, they watch Zombo, uh, an, a character from the original, of course, Eddie's hero. Eddie wanted to be Zombo, and then Herman Herman tried to be Zombo to impress Eddie. <laughs> Dude, that's just fucking rocks. Um, anyway, so Herman sees Zombo and is like, I love Hollywood. We're moving to fucking Hollywood. And I'm going to become famous because Zombo's fucking hideous and I'm a fucking gorgeous compared to Zombo. Okay, that's fine. If we're going to start a new story now, that's fine. And again, like like we're saying, like that's an episode. That's yep. a fucking episode. Herman, Herman decides to, to move Hollywood. to Hollywood. Dude, Herman goes to Hollywood and flows. I mean, that, that's great. And instead, the, for some reason, they just decide to pick this up with like... 30 minutes left in the fucking movie and you're like <laughs> wait what are we going to hollywood and herman's going to become an actor hey guess what herman <laughs> d- drops that dream immediately they just moved to hollywood <laughs> they just moved to fucking hollywood there's no fucking dream of being zombo that's gone that just forgot yeah it's never yeah. talked about again <laughs> and and also herman is like this is when herman is like like herman's like let's move to hollywood we'll figure it out we'll get the money because they're broke they don't have a house and Grandpa's like, oh, please take me. And Herman's like, you fucking worthless sack of shit. And you're like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, what the fuck is that? What? You know what? Well, since when do you like him? And Grandpa's pleading. He's like, one fucking box, old man. And if you bring fucking Igor, you're out of here. And you're like, what is, what? why is Herman the most aggressive fucking person in the movie suddenly? <laughs> and Herman is the one that got him into this predicament. Yeah, dude, Herman signed his house away. <laughs> And he's like, you worthless old sack of shit. <laughs> it's fucking nuts. And then we, uh, to sneak Igor with him, uh, Grandpa turns Igor into a bat, which is how we know Igor Pretty cool. in the show. Pretty cool. I really liked it. And I also really like when they get to Hollywood and Igor's flying around, and Grandpa's like, yeah, man, I don't know how to turn this fucking guy back into a person. <laughs> like, I fucking liked that a lot. Like, he was like, dude, it, I think he's fucking stuck. <laughs> like, that's, no, like, no, the fucking funny as fuck, yeah. dude. <laughs> Turning a person into a bat by accident. Well, not by, on purpose, and then being like, I can't fucking undo that. I don't know how to fucking do that. I fucking dug it. I thought it was fucking good. Um... Anyway, they head to Hollywood. They immediately get a real estate agent who is uh, Elvira. Elvira, who, by the way, passes out when seeing them, even though she's dressed as a witch. And it's Halloween, and she says when she wakes up that she was expecting people to show up in costume. And so literally, it- everyone else is like, no one has a reaction to these people whatsoever, <laughs> except for her. Who fa- anyway, her acting is good though. She plays a strange woman, she's amazing. Great. Yeah. That, she's that, great. That's her first time, I think, maybe ever playing not a tongue in cheek character or like she has to play the straight man to the monsters. Like that's that's fucking talent, man. That's a different acting world for her. Yeah, she she I liked her cameo a lot. Yeah, it was really good. Um so they get the real estate agent. Um we go to Mockingbird Heights is a new development, uh, with all these beautiful houses, uh very like, you know, j- cookie cutter houses right and the monsters think it's the greatest place on earth because it's halloween and everyone's in halloween costumes um 
you know, the monsters weren't that cut off from like reality for them to like not understand what Halloween was, but that's okay. <laughs> Literally like walking around France like at night. Um, so the movie is building you up to get to where the show starts. Yes. And we are here. Yes. But there's still like 20 minutes and that's fucking nuts. That's fucking nuts. Cause they find 1313 Mockingbird Lane. It's a fucking rundown piece of shit. Just like in the show. It's actually great. Looks it looks amazing. Like it. it looks amazing. It looks great. It, it looks great. Yeah. Um, and I actually love this bit of, of them thinking the agent is swindling them. Cause she's like trying to sell them the nice houses and they're like, this fucking asshole is trying to keep us away from the good house on the fucking street. We're going to fucking show her a what for. And they're all in on it together. Like Lily, Herman, and Grandpa are like, this motherfucker. She's going, she ain't going to get away from this. Yeah. <laughs> and so like Herman's like, yeah, you dumb fucking asshole. We want this one. <laughs> She's like, name your price. And he's like, oh, no. Oh, no. You're not getting that. She's like, just take it. It's just literally just take it. And he keeps going on and on. It's- yeah, it's a, it's a decent bit where Herman's like, we're going to pay more than anyone else. <laughs> and she's like, I'm literally giving it to you. And to a point where Lily's like, hey, can you please fucking stop? She's giving us the fucking house. Um, <laughs> and that's cool, right? But that's the end. That should be the end of the movie. They get 1313 Mockingbird Lane. End of story. Instead, the movie's not over. Cut to in the house where they're sitting on the couch and they're like, so what do we do now? <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> this snorted because it's just lazy, lazy writing. That's like, so fucking next? lazy. <laughs> and you know that everyone else is like, yeah, what is next? What? I thought this was the end of the fucking movie. You just got the house. That's the end. You end on that. Like. You turn and you're like, we want that one. Boom. End of it. Hit the Munsters music and you just see Mockingbird Lane and you're just like, that's the end, right? You're like, oh, fuck. That'd be a great uh, closing shot. Right? Yeah, right? Like, like that's the house we want. Like, she's like, so which one? And then they point to 1313 and it's a fucking, fucking amazing. No, that's not what it is. Anyway, they go to a Halloween party. A scene that does not need to happen. A scene that does not need to happen. Ever. Instead ever. of ending, instead of ending at, at the house that everybody knows, he decides to introduce Gateman Goodberry and Graves, which, which is where Harmon works. works. Yes. In the show. Which, but like, what? nobody, nobody's clamoring for that. And, <laughs> and by the way, they already gave like a cool, um, they gave a cool Gateman Goodberry and Graves cameo in this when they pull into the street there's a plane flying by advertising the fucking funeral parlor and i was all like you needed you know he's gonna work there I was all like, you need that's needed. sick that's so sick like i yeah. thought that was sick and then they introduced the three characters and <laughs> they won't get off the screen for the next 10 minutes they're, just, <laughs> they're like singing at one point aren't they <laughs> yes dude they're like a barbershop quartet <laughs> So they go to this Halloween party. They win the costume contest hosted by Gateman, Goodberry, and Graves. And then they even offer Herman the job. And you're like, dude, okay, like, where where does this fucking end? How far are we going to go? We're definitely getting Eddie. We're definitely getting the baby announcement, like, for sure. Like, if we're going this far, like, whoa, Herman's getting the job offer. Which, by the way, that's contradicted at the end, too. Like, like, that would have been great. Yeah. I thought maybe we would get a Marilyn appearance. Like, hey, uh, now Same. that you're here, uh, Marilyn's going to show up. And, and um, the, if the movie ended with, like, Marilyn at the oh. door, be like, hey, I'm fine. I'm fine with that. That's that a good be- ending. Dude, you actually had the opportunity to do that because when they freak out about the humans right now, it would have been amazing for them to, like, lock themselves in the house and be like, what do we do? And then, like, there's a knock. And then it's a fucking human. And she's like, I'm related to you. And you're like, that'd be great. That'd be great. <laughs> That'd be great. Fun fact, guys. That's not what happens. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, again, like, it's cool. That's where Herman worked. Um, but that will all be undone in a few minutes. We get the five minutes of the monsters doing nothing. It's just bad Rob Zombie jokes pretending to be monsters jokes, but they're not. Um, and then they – Herman goes outside to go to his job, realizes that everyone's human, and – freaks the fuck out. It was like, Wah! again, 
He was just in Paris walking around being like, oh, look at these ugly people. Like, and suddenly he's like, what the fuck? And he runs inside, is like, we have to move. This is fucked. And they're like, what? And they go outside and they're like, oh my God, this is fucking terrible. <laughs> um, they go back inside. You get the 911 call, the car 54, where are you reference, which is insane. <laughs> and the movie ends because remember Lester from the three other scenes in the movie? Well, he shows back up and is like, Hey guys, by the way, I gamble the money and I want it all. And like, here's a million dollars. And the monsters are just now rich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And ends with them. Like her, and then passing it to Sherry and her doing that. And then passing it to grandpa and they're all screaming. We're rich. That's yeah. the dumbest fucking thing I've ever fucking. Dude, <laughs> this was Lester's payoff. Was this Lester just shows up and is like, "I have money," which, by the way, again gets negates the G- Gateman, Goodberry, and Graves like job offer thing because now they're just fucking loaded. What, what do we do? Well, they're rich. What, why even include? So again, why do you include that? Why are you wasting my fucking time with this shit? <laughs> because <laughs> they won the costume contest and they won money from that, and that was like. It wasn't a lot. It was like $1,500, right? But it was like, oh, this is how they stabilize themselves. Like, I okay, Rob, I know that's over storytelling, but like, okay, you're giving them, you're explaining how they'll survive in this world, right? Like, they got a little cash yeah. and Herman got a job offer. You want to put some closure to that, I guess. That's fine. But then this guy just shows up and is like, by the way, we're millionaires. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end of the fucking movie. Yep. Of all of them being like, woo! End of the fucking <laughs> monsters. End of it. You, there's nothing post credit. There's nothing in the credits. There's no Eddie. There's no Marilyn. That's the end. The monsters are That's rich. It. What was the problem? No one really had a problem. Their problems were solved without the money. They got a decent check and Herman got a job. What? <laughs> 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 like they didn't even solve a problem with the money. Now they're just rich. <laughs> like the problem was solved with Goodman and Graves, who for no reason were like, "Would you like to move bodies for us?" And Herman's like, "Oh, I'm pretty good at that." What? What? No, you're not. <laughs> you're fucking pretty bad at everything you fucking do. Um, <laughs> fucking clutch, yeah. dude. Yeah. Uh, and to take us this far past Mockingbird and only end with this is just bad. It's bad writing. It's really fucking bad. The writing is the negative. What what was the what was the problem in the movie? What what did they what did the monsters have to overcome? Everything that they needed to overcome was overcome in literally one scene. That's not even an exaggeration. Once the gypsy calls and is like, I'm evicting you from your house, Grandpa's like, oh, fuck. And then immediately Herman's like, it's fine. We're moving to Hollywood. What? (laughs) What? (laughs) What? That's not like you guys don't even have fucking cash. Like, what do we? What? what? That's the solution? Fucking Lily is fucking lonely for one night and then is like, wait, I fell in love with this guy on the TV. I'm just going to fucking show up to his fucking show. Everything solved one scene. Very rushed, which fine if it's resolved in one episode arc. One episode. There you go. Like you can tell yeah. those stories in an episode. That's, That's fine. The movie was eight episodes, but in a linear movie setting. It's fucking not. Doesn't good. work. It's not Doesn't fucking work. good. It's not. It's not good. But it's not bad. It was fun. I think Rob had his. Um, heart. I think his Rob. I think Rob had his heart in the right place. I think. Maybe I think I think Rob. Oh, of course, Rob thinks it's good. Um, I don't know what to say. I didn't hate it. I it don't just know. it just fell short. It fell short for a guy who was who begged to make the monsters movie for twenty years. You expected a lot more out of it. Yeah, and it's the same criticism I have of Halloween for somebody who loves it so much. How, how do you do? I that? expect more. Yeah. I expect more. Just a like, and it, by the way, he's like. On the cusp, right? Like, he's right there, but then just decides to do dumb fucking shit. Yeah. 
And by the way, would you have liked this if you did like an R version of the monsters? I don't think so. I think it would have been horrible. I think it would have been I th- yeah, way I think worse. It would have been just, like 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 we're saying. This is. I don't think this is pure bad. I think if it was rated R, it would have been. I think it would have been abysmal. absolutely fucking impossible to get through. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> the only thing holding this together was like Rob had to write within like some type of guideline, like some some boundary. Right, there were some boundaries. Sometimes boundaries are good. Yeah, <laughs> he had like the fucking bumpers at the fucking Not bowling just alley. Chaos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it kept them in his lane. I think. I think that's the only thing that fucking saved this fucking movie whatsoever. Um. You can't wait for his car 54. Where are you? Reboot. (laughs) With the same fucking cast. I would expect nothing less. I hope Lily play, or I hope uh, Sherry plays Fred Gwynn. Plays, plays Mr. Ed. (laughs) It is a Mr. Ed reboot. (laughs) Fucking. Oh my God. That would be amazing. Car 54. Where are you? I just want to pull this up real quick. Car 54. Where are you? What a fucking show. Oh, Fred Gwynn was skinny mini in this, man. What a fucking... Jesus Christ. Was his skeleton studied after no, he died? He, no, he... he um, he, Dude, he was like the same build in the Monsters. They, they bulked him up because there's episodes in the Monsters where he he appears in human form as like a side character. Oh, yeah. He's he also like has super, a twin he's brother. Like super dashing and handsome. <laughs> dude, Rob, like... I was like... I was digging through like some old monsters episodes because of this. And I was like, God, thank God Rob didn't like, there were so many like funny characters and moments in the monsters that are great. Like, um, uh, Herman's twin brother who Fred Gwynn also played. Um, I was like, thank God Rob didn't do that. Like that, that sounds like exactly like he would have, something he would have done though. Like I, I was like, Oh my God. Like we, we missed, we dodged a fucking bullet. We really dodged a fucking bullet. Cause like had somebody reminded Rob about that episode while he was writing it, we'd be fucking stuck with twin Herman for no reason <laughs> in three scenes. Like, <laughs> fuck. Like, thank God he forgot about that episode. Like it, dig through like some of the episodes and like shit that happened. You're like, Oh my God. Thank God. he didn't I know do some that. people are pissed that he didn't include the Dragula, but if this is an origin story, it wouldn't make sense to have the dragon. Like, no. he doesn't get it till Herman goes uh, street racing. Also, <laughs> fucking Dracula is fucking insane. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> how would Herman get that in this fucking movie? How does he get it? Period. Fucking insane. Fucking Dracula. <laughs> Grandpa gives it to him. In the Hot Rod or Herman. Yeah. That's. that's- he, he wears like the leather cap, right? <laughs> like the fucking leather <laughs> racing cap. <laughs> that show is so rules. fucking funny, dude. That show is so <laughs> fucking funny. And Herman's delivery in the show is so fucking great. Like it's so fucking good. Just I, I'm thinking about it and the way he's just like, mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, can we talk about how much Fred Gwynn? fucking hated the monsters and how much he hated the fucking Herman makeup and like wanted to kill himself the entire time. He, well, he hated getting into it. But then in later years, he's like, I just can't stop thinking about Herman. And I think I'm starting to like the old guy. <laughs> that's, that's actually sweet. That's actually sweet. It is, do- yeah. Well, I mean, the monsters is only, it only ran for two seasons, but, but each season, <laughs> like, like 37 episodes. <laughs> fucking, ridiculous the, the amount of work that he must have had to put in that, that, that must have been exhausting dude be fucking filming for over a year for a fucking uh, pro- probably like for two years on the TV. <laughs> two years waking up at it probably took like 35 hours like makeup wasn't there yet and you're putting like him in all those fucking prosthetics and shit. <laughs> oh my god um that's that, man. Do you recommend the monsters? If you're a diehard monsters fan, I think you should watch it. Yeah, and you're not going to no thrilled. reason other than you, you're not going to like it. But I still think you should watch it. Uh, if you know nothing about the monsters and you love Rob Zombie, uh, maybe check it out. But if if you don't like either, uh, no, th- there's nothing. 
you, you could skip it. And you know, one thing that I will say is, uh, yeah, yeah, this is not a great version of the monsters, but it's like we mentioned earlier, it's not the first time the monsters has been redone. Motherfucker, they had Sam fucking McMurray play fucking Sam Herman McMurray. in the Christmas movie. That, mother- yeah. that guy couldn't be further from fucking Herman than anyone else ever. I mean, yeah, like, he's probably further than Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Daniel Phillips. Except he actually might have an actual square head. If you, <laughs> <laughs> which is insane. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, like that. That was brutal. Like it's it's not the first time this has been fucked up. So it's not like it's a sacred franchise by any means. But I think people just had a lot of hope because he was a guy that fucking loved the monsters, and you know, this is what we got. Yeah. Yes. This is what we got. Um. What are these fucking? Anyway, sorry. I'm I'm looking up these weird. The monsters' revenge. Have you seen any of these? Um, oh, Frank I have Wynn not seen the and Al Lewis Bend. are in that. <clears throat> it's so weird. Like some of these are, I, I I'd like to like go into a little bit more of the monsters. That's actually an interesting. That one was eighty one. Yeah, dude. Like that. I mean, I've seen I've seen Monster Go Home. I've seen the mini monsters. Monster Go Home. Yes. This is. We might have to dig in this. Al Lewis as my grandpa is a vampire, but I don't think that's a fucking related movie. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. <laughs> also, Al Lewis is only three years older than Fred Gwynn. Get the fuck out of yeah. here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Al Lewis looks like 170 years old in every episode <laughs> of that. Al Lewis, a real fucking. Um, I, I hope I have this right. I'm pretty sure I do. A real fucking, um, uh, how would I say it? What's the word for it? He was a, in politics, he was very left wing, like Green Party. He he was a candidate for New York City governor in the 90s. I remember it. Um, I was old enough to remember that happening. And he, he was like. The, f- the fact that Al Lewis was alive in the 90s a, is astounding. Dude, he ran in 1998. Fred Gwynn died in 1993. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's not funny, but that's the funniest fucking thing. <laughs> hey, guess what, man? Fucking Al lasted till 2006. Yeah. Good for Al, man. <laughs> Dude, following his body's cremation, his ashes were put in his favorite cigar box. <laughs> 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 That's fucking amazing. What a fucking guy. Um, but he was like a super, he was super, he, he, he had a lot of like political things. He stood up for like a lot of cool shit. Um, so he's like a really cool guy. Um, all right. <laughs> That's it. That's the episode. Fucking longest episode we've ever done on fucking the monsters. 2022. <laughs> um, next week, guys, first of all, enter the contest. Sean at I hate horror.com subject line contest. Send us your absolutely most favorite under the radar movies for spooky season. And you can win yourself a digital copy of I, I don't think I'm allowed to say copy. I'm sorry. A, a digital a digital download of the Lost Boys and Poltergeist on uh, f- 4K Ultra HD, baby. Uh, <laughs> I'm not looking at the prompt, so <laughs> I'm trying to do this the best I can. 4K Ultra HD. I did. I said that right. So send that on over. You can win a copy of that. We're giving away copies of that, and you could be the movie that we do for the live show. Um, so get ready for that and own Poltergeist and the Lost Boys now on 4K Ultra HD. You can head on over to warnerbrothers.com slash collections slash Halloween, uh, to, to grab your copy there. Um, and that's it, guys. Thank you all so much. Patreon.com slash I hate horror, I hate horror.com. Uh, you can find all the information there. Store launching very soon next week, probably by the time this episode drops. Um, 
next week. We are doing Halloween H2O. That's next week? It's next week. Let's fucking go. I'm excited. I'm excited too, man. A movie we poo-pooed. I think I think we poo pooed it. Uh during I think we did when, when talking yes, and then over the hiatus uh that we had on the show, Tina and I rewatched yeah, it. And I was the like, fuck what the up fuck? about it. <laughs> 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 Joe just kept messaging me being like, This movie is actually fucking great. And I was like, I don't think that's true, but <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're going to find out hey, next week. Hey, but listen, this is more important. I'm looking at photos of Al Lewis from 1999. Anybody that voted for anyone that looked like this should be fucking jailed. He, he looks, dude, it, he has like hair growing out of his ear that is like one foot, one foot wide. It's unbelievable. <laughs> this fucking guy. <laughs> it looks like a brain dead Joe Pesci. What, what did you send it on? Are you sending it to me? I haven't sent shit. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking, expecting you to find it. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm trying to look, but for some reason, a picture of, uh, of, uh, I searched Al Lewis and that fucking porn star came up. I don't know. I fucking hate this. Al Lewis, 1998. Oh, shit. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> I remember this fucking picture. I remember this fucking picture. <laughs> I remember. Wait, I remember. Here, I'll throw it up for the for the folks on Patreon that can uh, fucking see this. Uh, this fucking guy. Hey, vote for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's not even the one I was looking at, but that's a great one too. Oh, fucking... <laughs> was it this fucking <laughs> psycho? <laughs> For this fucking <laughs> menace, what what, what version? Oh, Jesus Christ! What version <laughs> of these do you vote for? Dude, go back to the one where he's cosplaying as Steve Zissou. <laughs> oh wait, I'm trying to click on the fucking wrong thing. Look at this. <laughs> Steve, Steve Zissou, <laughs> bro, is this him in a cowboy hat? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to everybody listening at home. I can't see shit, but uh, just <laughs> deal with it. Patreon only. All right, guys. Thank you all Rest so much. Rest in peace, Al Lewis. <laughs> Rest in peace. You were a good dude. Um, <laughs> thank you all so much. Facebook.com slash I hate horror. I hate horror.com. I'm just going to leave this up and continue to serve. Um, <laughs> Facebook.com slash I hate horror. Um, Instagram at I hate horror. Hey, Joe, where, <laughs> where, where can they find you? <laughs> Joking. <laughs> That's his fucking freak. Uh, Boognish1985. <laughs> <laughs> I, <was, laughs> uh, guy's got a great hat collection. Yeah, he does. He really does. Like, a- absolutely out of control. What the collection. fuck is that? <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. All right, dude, guys. Wait. Dude, he's holding up a uh, He's holding up a present Dokken. <laughs> dude, I can I can just picture somebody cracking their knuckles right now ready to write a review on on Apple Podcasts. <laughs> These guys are so off topic. <laughs> they won't stop talking about pictures that only they can see. <laughs> Hey, motherfuckers, just Google Al Lewis Old. You can have a laugh, too. Or join us on Patreon and watch the video. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> this, this is what comes up on Al I'm Lewis. I'm Jeremy. <laughs> anyway. All right, guys. We got to end this. Uh, appreciate you all. Love you all. Halloween H2O next week. I'm excited for it. <laughs> This is literally the funniest bit we've ever done. <laughs> I've never laughed harder at our own shit. Uh, fucking ridiculous. <laughs> by the way, this is the shit Joe and I do like by ourselves. <laughs> when we go to cons, we just like go to back to the hotel and do this for like fucking 45 minutes. Um, <laughs> He's like a real life Batman villain. <laughs> 
exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> oh my god, I'm fucking crying. All right, guys, thank you so much. Enjoy, uh, <laughs> enjoy uh, the monsters. We're doing a Halloween H two O. Um, and yeah, appreciate you all for Joe. This is Sean. <laughs> Stay weird. Thank you. <laughs> Adios. <laughs> Fucking zombie getting sliced and diced. The monster.